And the UN Maritime Court is hearing a landmark case brought by a group of small island states seeking protection for the world's oceans from catastrophic climate change. The International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea will determine if carbon dioxide emissions absorbed by the oceans should be considered marine pollution. And if so, what obligations should apply to countries so that it can be prevented? And Trent Murray joins us live from Berlin. Trent, why is this issue of such urgency and what can these nine island states achieve by bringing this to the UN's Maritime Court? Well, if you look at the case that they've submitted, they uh, argue that they have been sounding the alarm over this issue for several decades, really, to little avail in their view. And so what you've got now is this group of island nations, including the likes of Vanuatu and Tuvalu, uh, arguing that they only contribute 1% to the world's emissions. And it's those world's biggest emitters, the likes of the United States and China and India, that need to be doing more to help protect their islands. And so what they've done is gone to this international tribunal in a very unusual way, it has to be said. Normally what this tribunal would do is hear cases around fishing or rites of passage or maritime pollution involving plastic and the like. But what they are asking this tribunal to hear is a new test case, essentially one that argues that greenhouse gases are indeed a form of marine pollution. And so those countries that are signatories to that UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, all 168 of them, then they should be held accountable. So this is a real landmark test. We know the case is going to last for around two weeks of oral and written arguments. It's worth noting the likes of China and the EU have asked to participate in this case. They are clearly paying attention. But whether or not the court rules in the favour of these islands, we will have to see. But it certainly uh, is garnering a lot of attention, particularly in Europe. Well, should the court rule in their favour, would this mean putting more pressure on countries who have pledged to reduce their emissions, would that put pressure on them to meet those emissions or face some sort of legal punishment? Well, I certainly think that is the idea behind this. I mean, what we do know is that these countries are not asking for damages right now in this court. But what they are hoping for is that they, they can just get a legal opinion from the court uh, of the sea that indeed greenhouse gases is a form of pollution. Then what that does is essentially pave the way for further legal action down the road. Some legal analysts say it could even open up nation states to be held liable for damages and ignoring their promises to help prevent marine pollution as part of this old UN convention, which was signed all the way back in the 1980s. So, look, there is certainly a lot going into this. Um, many of the countries that are involved are simply saying that they just don't have time for all of this legal wrangling, that they, uh, some of them are losing their atolls to rising sea levels. There's coastal erosion, damage to their infrastructure from increased hurricanes and typhoons. And so they really are hoping that they can argue in this new avenue, this new forum that more needs to be done to reach those Paris Climate Accord agreements. And of course, it's worth mentioning that while this all plays out in the legal courts, the court of public opinion remains very, very strong. We know here in Europe this coming Friday, there will be major protests across the continent. That Friday is for Future Group, led by Greta Thunberg, once again arguing for greater action against climate change. Oh, thanks, Trent Murray speaking to us there from Berlin.